Is it? No. Or is it greenwashing? Now, for this, I want you to, you know what I mean? With the editing. Okay. Or is it greenwashing? Whoa. Hello, and welcome back to the Croak and Crow podcast. I am Spencer Cardia. I am Young McDonald. Not old McDonald. No. Is there a young McDonald? Well, how did he? He had. I thought he was a. I thought he was a, a man without any kin, any next of kin. Well, he ha- He 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 didn't hatch out of the farmer patch. When he was young, McDonald. Oh, so you were the same McDonald? Yeah. I thought that was a um a last name, a family name, and you were saying there's old McDonald, Papa McDonald. No, like old McDonald had a farm. Yeah. Young McDonald had the the, had hope, a dream. the hope, the dreams of having a Young McDonald had a dream. <laughs> um, and this here is Frank, who is just, he's ready for vacation. He is. Um, a little early. It's only Thursday. It's only Thursday, but he's like, what he's saying is this June 9th. Yeah. It's it's time to go. It's time to vacay. Yeah. And so he's ready, wearing his floral shirt and his uh, beautiful hat, which kind of looks like an afro from there. It might be my bad eyes, but it I think looks, it's your it, bad eyes because there's a definite. It looks line. like a bad eyes, but it might be. It also looks like um, Bob Ross if he went gray. How about that? I worry about your eyes when you say stuff like that. <laughs> <clears throat> How you guys doing? It is a beautiful day to be alive. It's a good day to be passed away as well. I mean, if that true, if that's already happened, on that I wouldn't side. go out of my way to to do it. I would <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> if it's just it's already happened. Good, good start. And, you maybe you're in listen, heaven. Listen, ma- Miss Ramblin' Man. <laughs> I know a Ramblin' Man. I got you a present. Oh, more presents? A present. Yeah, why not? Oh, okay. Why not? I know you love presents. So. What is that? What the heck is this? I don't know because you're ew. very... I know. He said, ooh. You're very dietarily um, particular. So Okay. Rind. It's the brand. Keep it real. Eat the peel. Cocoa know. melon. Coco melon, like the show. Is that what it's called? Coco melon. Skin on dried fruit. Crispy coconut, sweet watermelon. Let me tell you something. One, I'm not going to eat the coconut. Two. Okay, I disgusting. wondered about the coconut in the store, but then I said, you make those almond yeah, joys. Yeah, I mean, uh, like dried coconut is like a thing, but dried watermelon? I don't know why I'm going out of my way to open this one. I'm probably- I think I can try it this time. I, I do think it's gluten free. Well, I don't think anyone's trying it because I don't think I opened it correctly. I'll do it for you. Oh, pish posh. Use the pizza cutter. I'm an adult. <laughs> um, do you know why I gave you a watermelon? Uh, Spencer? Do you know why I gave you... Oh. Okay, it's okay. What happened? Like, how did I How did I mess this up so bad? Do you know why I gave you a... ASMR. Wa- do you know why I gave you a watermelon treat? Is because today, Chipotle, for the first time ever... Um, announced a seasonal beverage. You're going oh, to yeah? break your teeth, so just stop. We'll do it another time. Oh, wait, I have something. A seasonal beverage, and the flavor is watermelon limeade. You can imagine what it's going to taste like, watermelon and lime. Yummy. Chipotle's mm-hmm. having that? Chipotle. First time ever. It was announced today, June 9th. Spencer, stop digging into the table. Cut towards yourself, not away from yourself. Be a man. Um, and it's only Ugh, pungent. It's only for a limited time, and it's in the U.S. and Canadian restaurants. <laughs> okay, this is gonna be awful, and I'm gonna tell you why. Oh, it's mixed together, or is that just watermelon? I think it's mixed together. I think the flavor is watermelon coconut. No, I think that's just watermelon because you can see coconut pieces. And there's their seeds. The, I'm going to tell drama, you why this is the, disgusting. The absolute drama. It's not disgusting. Rind. Get it at CVS. I'm going to tell you why it's disgusting. Look, I've, you, I've, you, you tore it to shreds, but it tells you it's vegan and friendly and sulfite and free. I'm going to tell you why this is disgusting. It was gently dried, not aggressively dried. I'm going to tell you why this is disgusting. Why is it disgusting? Because I'm the biggest watermelon fan. Yeah. And I've let watermelon sit out. Yeah, and it, it dries like, out just like that. It literally... It, I, can you bring that close? It literally looks like old pizza. Like this, a slice of. What do you got? You don't like dried fruit. Neither do I. Okay. It's not that bad. It gives raisin vibes. It's very hard. But I just can't help to get getting away from the fact that like... It I definitely like, gives raisin vibes. And I don't like raisins. I like raisins, but... I, I don't d- like this. 
No, it definitely gives off like the vibe of like I had watermelon here. It tastes like rind for real. And you don't, no one eats the rind ever. I don't think you're supposed to. It's kind of growing on me. It's not on me. Like, I literally feel a little bit upset about it. If I don't imagine the fact that, like, I'm not just peeling old water. Nah. I don't like it. Mm -mm. It's awful. It's it's absolutely awful. Who would eat that? I don't know. But um, everyone go to Rind Snacks on Instagram. <laughs> Tell them we didn't like it. Ooh. It makes my blood run cold. It's absolutely awful. I I usually am very kind to people. And I'm like, maybe it's for someone else. It's for no one. Mm-mm. I'm trying to imagine like who's appealing to. Yikes! I I'm get, trying to imagine who who it's posed awful. How are you posed not that taking idea? a drink? Who posed that? Because I don't have one. Who posed that idea to their wife and said, "I'm a dehydrated watermelon. It's going to be a hit, Marion." Forget the wife. How about the bank? Uh, like, who had the money? Who yeah, sold that for a loan? Uh, oh my god, it's getting so much worse. I don't know how graphic or PG fourteen I'm going to get, but ew. So it's stuck with my teeth because so you chew it like gum, but it's turning slimy. slimy. I know. I know. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Do you need a toothpick? Do you need to cut? Do you need? <sighs> no. Yeah. Uh, all right. Did you hear me about Chipotle? What about it? That they have a drink. Yeah. Cherry limeade. Watermelon. Yeah. Watermelon limeade. Limeade. But they didn't make the drink. A company called Tractor. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, they're on Instagram too. It's called uh, something on Tractor. Drink Tractor on Instagram. Right now at <laughs> right now um, at Chipotle, if you ever go. Yeah. You go. If you ever get the, you probably don't, lemonade or iced tea. Okay. It's the Tractor brand. He's an organic farmer who started a, just much like this, but hopefully better. See how it says like. Organic, yeah, no preservatives. Yeah, no yeah. It's these drinks, right? So uh, Chipotle said, let's put this out for the summer, first time ever. And also let's give 5% of the profits to go to farm causes. Oh, awesome. Is it? No. Or is it greenwashing? Now for this, I want you to, you know what I mean? With the editing. Okay. Or is it greenwashing? Whoa. Okay. Because, so go on YouTube. I went, usually I don't. I mean, I always go on YouTube, but I don't usually follow links. I went on YouTube. Uh, yeah. And it, and I found, um, so Chipotle has like, they call it a short film. It's literally two minutes. It's a commercial. Yeah. Um, it's a commercial, right? And and it's, it's um, you know, Casey Musgraves? Yeah. Okay. She's, she's singing in it. And it's called A Future Begins. And it's really cute graphics. You know when they have the little felt shaped yeah. people and it's like the little pigs and the little cows so it's because um chipotle it's a commercial it's an ad it's a promotion for the young farmers young mcdonald young farmers alliance in america that they want to do there's a farm bill next year and they want to get like billions of dollars to give these young farmers millions probably millions of acres it's all this promotional, right? Yeah. You can go watch the video. You can sign the petition, dot, 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 right? Do your part. And it sounds great. And it sounds wonderful. Yeah, two, two, four, $2.5 billion for 1 million acres for young farmers. But this is what I I dove a little deeper. That's why I found out it's, it's greenwashing. Because Carhartt, you know Carhartt. Yeah. The clothing. Yeah. They Working pre- man's clothing. And farmer man's cl- farmer yes. Farmer. Just well, they're the hardest men. workers I know. Farmer's clothing they 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 paired up with chipotle when this whole thing came out okay. so the, the the drink came out today but this farmer thing was at, here since last fall chipotle has been under fire because in chipotle's push to say we're organic we our for our cows come home with us at night <laughs> you know like we are so kind and and what the farmers didn't like was they were painting a picture of the scary farms with all the poison oh. and get out of here, pig. <laughs> right. And and um and so they they were like, La la la, you just want you just want farms that have like a few things so they can talk to them and you know. And so all of these farmers in America are like, we are not mean, we are not um toxic. What they are is big and bold and can say, This is how much things are gonna cost. And it's Chipotle going in and saying, mm, how about we'll, 
we'll pat the, the young farmers on the head. Give us a deal. Yeah, th- that that mm. they leave the country. They get um, Chipotle gets stuff from Mexico and Argentina. <sighs> and- Chipotle, <laughs> you're a dead man. Um, so Chipotle's greenwashing, and this film is greenwashing. It makes and- me so mad. <laughs> This whole thing's greenwashing because because Chipotle, let everybody know this, Chipotle is acting holier than thou. Chipotle, so anyway, the farmers were mad at Carhartt then. They're like, how dare you? We're going to stop wearing your jackets. People are always threatening to stop wearing Carhartt. I know. Um, because they're saying Chipotle has demonized us and they are pretending to be organic and non-preservative and non-GMO. And the way they do that is because if some of the stuff is, they'll push that that out in front. Yeah. And they don't they don't you don't know what's in the taco sauce and you don't know yeah. what's in the you yeah. know, da, da, da. So it's a whole mess. So what started out as, oh, Chipotle has a new drink. Watermelon turned lime. into you can't trust a burrito from Chipotle. Don't even don't even. Don't even. Boycott. No, or yeah, I don't know. If, <sighs> yeah. Go, I guess. No. Don't wear a car heart, don't eat Chipotle. Ever, yeah, but but then how do you how do you help the farmers? I don't, I don't know. Buy local. No, yeah. that's what these farmers are saying. Buy big business. It's not big, like well, 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 well it's two sides of every story. What if the big farmers are bad? Well, they have they have reason to stretch the truth. Who can you trust? <laughs> no one. You can't trust that's that. That's the problem. The whole point of this is don't trust anyone. If you want vegetables, grow it in your backyard. If you don't have a backyard. Sorry. All right. So this is what I'm going to say. You you can't live life without trusting anyone. We talked about the other day. Remember? We have yeah. to trust that the ceiling won't fall on us. But just every time someone tells you something, like I was ready to buy this hook, line, and sinker. Not buy the drink, but buy, like, oh, yeah. the cute film and Chipotle loves farmers. But then the farmer was like, they don't love us. So so maybe just always be like. Yeah. In the middle. Don't let, tell, don't let someone else tell you what choice is virtuous and what choice isn't yeah chipotle saying right. well we're right. doing good don't let anyone t- and uh, let let your own research your own conscience check out yesterday's podcast right um you know because look at got milk right they told you the entire time how important it was turns out it was the big dairy telling you that pushing those ads right do your own research we're adults we have computers Ch- believe me children can do it too what Children are great read little researchers. Uh, that's true. They have they, computers. They, they do? <laughs> they grew up on it. It's National Sex Day. National Sex Day. It's also Johnny Depp's birthday. <gasps> Happy birthday, Johnny. I'm I I'm I I'm wondering why he didn't tell me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have something for him. <clears throat> that might be worse than his ex wife. I'm worried about Johnny Depp because Why are you worried about Johnny Depp? Johnny Depp has a substance um yeah, I feel like we all kind of glossed o- glossed over that disease. Yeah, and, and like because we were pro Johnny, right? Anti lie, right? We were not demonizing him for his the substances that were well, he was using. We wouldn't and demonize we, no, him. We we should never demonize him. Right, but it like because we're like okay, that's not the point right now. That's not the point right now. Right now that it's all over, it's right. like if he had just came out on his like. Hey guys, just so you know, I'm doing a low, low ton of drugs on the daily right. to keep myself level headed. Right. You'd be like, I'm concerned for you. Exactly. And um, I hope that. That's exactly what I. That's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. I just saw a picture of Page Six, New York, um, uh, that New York paper, and his two bodyguards were, were. He's a smaller guy than they are, so they, they were supporting his walking out of yeah. this place, and so. Obviously, we we know he's struggled with substance use um, for decades. Yeah, a long time. When he was sitting there, uh, go and for, for six weeks, you know, going through this trial, and they just say like all these words, you know, cocaine, alcohol, this, this, wine, and gin, and um, you know, all, all the ones, MDMA, whatever. I thought a regular person, an average Joe. That would be very, very like bad for them to be subjected to hearing that, remembering that. Oh, is he trying to get clean? Um, he's he all the time. He stops all the time because mm. he would be dead. He's fifty eight. Yeah, and he goes very hard. So he would be dead by now if he didn't have these periods where he stops and he tries and he, you know, 
gets he goes to his private island and gets you know detoxed um and so supposedly at this time yes he was he had stopped but um i just thought that can't be good then of course the celebration stress, wow. well yeah the stress during and then the uh. celebration after i can't imagine that he was uh, like let's all cheers with water so i thought um this is not over for him in that because like you said that the trial's over and and yes you were vindicated but what about this ha- that has never been addressed and everything came out in that trial super personal stuff and that didn't yeah you know yeah that that he had found a way to get over it which you usually can't find a way to get over it but oh no. johnny no get the um, watermelon limeade for your birthday today don't spike it just yeah don't don't actually have any of your recommendations cherry limeade screen washing this is just terrible um i'm sorry maybe just i don't know a little axe all right then i have i have a fun fact for you okay um seals and sea lions don't drink water ever Hmm, let me process that for a second i am not wait i'm not surprised you're not surprised no okay they're (laughs) okay they're they're in the sea what water are they gonna drink i don't know they're not drinking salt water nobody drinks salt water right so what would they have drank yeah you're right they get their their hydration from the fish yeah that makes sense Mm. yeah i'll allow it gosh and i think that's all i have so i just don't know what else to tell you i'll tell you what else you're telling me it is thursday guys the best day of the week um on thursday we have a little segment that we've been doing for what feels like a decade and that is walk through thursday Uh, roll the intro please welcome back hope you're having fun because walk through wednesday just begun What's going on, guys? It is Walk Through Thursday. A very special day. Yeah. Uh, and very special. Do you know the place called Mercia? No. Mm. What is it? I don't know. I think it's in Spain. Oh, maybe. I know a lot of places in Spain. I think it has a big statue. Okay. Um, It's, uh, what's it? A- autonomous? Autonomous? Whatever. What does it do? It's National Mercia Day, which means nothing to me, but it just stuck in my eye because I thought it was Marica Day. Like Marica. Oh, Marissa. Oh, uh, M-U-R-C-I-A. Oh, Mer- it, the M-U-R-C-I-A, Mercia. It is Walk Through Thursday, and what we do is we open up the Bible. Once the Bible is open, we pick a Bible verse, which, by the way, we have started the Instagram polls once again. We had a Bible bracket pitting books against each other using individual verses. Well, it came to an end. Psalms 1. I chose Psalms from the beginning. We had so much fun doing that that we are doing it with strictly the New Testament books. So for all of you New Testament fans, this one's for you. Follow us at Crow and Crow. On Walk Through Thursday, we pick a verse and we walk through it slowly and surely. We're sure-footed walking through it like a tightrope. And, um, yeah, yeah, that's a good way to put it. The entire Bible is great, but sometimes it's nice to, uh, find value in individual verses. You never know what you might uncover whilst doing so. So, without further ado, we're just going to get into it. Yeah. Um, what are we reading today? Okay. So, in honor of National Sex Day, National Sex Day, we're reading 1 Corinthians 7. Okay. Um, 1 Corinthians 7 talks about sex. Nice. In the Bible. <laughs> in the bible and you thought the bible wasn't fun (laughs) come on um and it's um who 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 who, was his name paul 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 talking to uh, responding to the corinthians and um he starts uh one corinthians 7 by saying now i will answer the questions that you asked me in your letter so um the corinthians had asked paul about sex questions not specifically but mostly like um does a husband have to have sex with his wife? I guess if he doesn't want to, does she have to have sex with him if he doesn't want to? So like that. Also, sh- do you have to get married? Do you have to stay married? Um, and so forth. That is what 1 Corinthians 7 is about, just to let you know that part, okay? Um, and so that's the whole entire chapter, which we're not going to read because it's only walk through Thursday. So we're going to read verses 32, 33, and just the beginning of 34, Okay. Because so much of seven is good, but that's not that's not walk through Thursday. Yeah. So um 
here. Also, I'm falling in love with the contemporary English version. I see. You know what? Not many people do because every time I try to find a little cute little image of it, it's not there. Yeah. Then I have to just like copy and paste it from <laughs> Bible Gate. Like. So I like the contemporary English version, version, which is what I gave you. So 1 Corinthians 7, 32, 33, 34. And a little bit of 34. And I also have to tell you something else that I did to it. You're telling me a lot of things. I know. You changed the words? I did. Things in parentheses. It, I put person or they instead of man, woman, dot, dot, dot. If you read the whole chapter of 1 Corinthians 7, they might as well say, have said person, man, or woman, because it, it gives like the same, um, basically the same advice to men and women. Men don't have to get married if they don't want. Women don't have to get married if they don't want. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I just put people and they. So I did okay. not change the Bible. Okay. I just made it easier. Well, yeah, so you, that's the Verona version. Yeah. The VV. Yeah. <laughs> um, I want all of you to be free of, from worry. An unmarried person worries about how to please the Lord. But a married person has more worries. They must worry about the things of this world because they want to please their spouse. So they are pulled in two directions. Yep. That's it, right? Yeah. Um, I had mentioned this to somebody not that long ago. And I said, you know, uh, Paul actually advises you not to get married. And this person but said... But is, is this the direct him advising them not to get married? Isn't there something else that says? Well, it could, like that's what I'm saying. The, Where does it say don't get married? It, it, the whole chapter he's saying, if I just picked one verse, it yeah. wasn't enough. So like that was better to look. Okay. Well, because well, well, once again, um, I, 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 it's fine. Okay. I'm okay. Okay. But I don't think this is saying don't get married. Like you might have stated earlier. I think it's saying don't worry if you're not married. All throughout the chapter, he keeps saying... Don't worry if you're not going to marry. Just exactly what you just said. But he also says, but in my opinion, it's better if you are not. But I never saw that. So in the beginning of, you know, this uh, 1 Corinthians 7, that's where the infamous thing says, um, you, you should not, uh, you should not have sexual immorality. But if you do have it with your wife, basically saying like, if you're going to be out there looking for women, get married, you know? Right. Um, and that causes a lot of confusion with people. And um, then this verse that we are reading, um, you know, talks about you have more worries when you're married because you can't you can't focus on solely on God. And I find truth in that somewhat. And the somewhat comes from what these Corinthians were asking Paul. And that was all of the literally literal things about marriage. Like, well, can we do this? Well, when, when should we do this? Right. Or widow, when, what ha you know. And I think sometimes we feel like we need to get married or it's a part of life. It's a stepping stone of life. And, oh, well, I need to. Yeah. Uh, and, and it's... it's like you, they always say that now I'm complete. Yeah. And um, I think the same way I talk about other religious practices... Um, with this, I think same as other things, if you do it wrong, it defeats the purpose of what you were doing it for. Mm -hmm. I think marriage is a great thing. And I'll say the same thing about kids. I don't think everyone needs to have kids. I don't think, um, you like, there's any reason to have kids, but you can. And from a spiritual point of view, if you, if you have, are married or have kids for the wrong reasons, you are being pulled two different directions where I think the benefit of marriage and kids should be, you know, if you have a relationship with God, sometimes for people the first time in their life that they have a glimpse of what it means to love unconditionally. Right. Outside of themselves. Right. A lot of people, it happens with kids without them realizing. And they're like, and then I saw it, and then I was like, I'm ready to die for this thing. Right. And the same thing with marriage. It's a beautiful thing. I don't know why I'm doing air quotes. <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. But, and like people ask, like, oh, well, why is marriage, you know, even a religious thing? Why? It's just a document. For, right. So the, the, the point of it being religious is the idea that on earth you are loving unconditionally, selflessly outside of oneself. Right. Which is, in essence, 
a exact parallel of not exactly a parallel to God's love for us. Right. Because we, we say it all the time that if you know nothing else, love will let you know what it's about. Yes. Yeah. And so I think what this is saying is, is like you that's that's hard and, and that can be done wrong. And now you have two different like you can live a very loving life and have this this love relationship, this unconditional love relationship between you and God that can never mess up because it, God's doing all of the, the heavy lifting on being unconditional, being right. there for you no matter what. And so if you are just systematically getting married with someone and, oh, I don't really care. Well, without, and I think that's why they bring up divorce. Like, I'm not anti-divorce at all. But in this, it's like saying, I think it's like a spiritual marriage is, is, isn't is meant. There's a lot of earthly marriage. All marriage is earthly marriage. Right, yeah. And it's like, it's not perfect. And so you'll have a lot more to worry about getting married. And that shouldn't, I don't, and, and so personally, I guess walking away from it is, I don't think that should be the goal. I think it's a beautiful thing. You don't think what should be the goal? Marriage or kids. Oh, oh, just marriage itself. Okay. Yeah. I thought you meant a goal in marriage. You're I, saying marriage. Right? Marriage should be. Uh, yeah, and, and I would say, yeah, like, don't worry if you're not married at 30. If you're not, like, yeah. I, I, I think life is about love, right? right. I, I can't say that enough. And we can live a very loving life no matter what. And I think the best marriages come when you have, you know, have that relationship with God. Or just with love, because love is God. God is love. Right. And then you find someone to mirror that unconditional love with, rather than searching for someone and then trying to say, I love you unconditionally. Right. Because then what are they asking? They're asking all the conditions. What if, what if, what if? That's like, okay, God will always love you. Well, what if I do this? What if I do this? What right. if I do this? It's like, you're asking all things that, that defeat the purpose of unconditionality unconditional sure. sure. and so it's a it's a hard thing um well yeah I, it, it's surprising to see a bible book or bible chapter that is so realistic yeah it's so realistic it's saying the reality of life that it is hard you know when people say i want to start a business yeah. i want to have a bakery and it's like uh, uh a, a mentor will tell you Okay, but it's really hard. It could be really rewarding, but it's also going to be really hard. Yeah. And this is saying you will be pulled in different directions. You will not be able to focus all your attention or have your peace. I, I think um, it might be the last line. Um, you know, he says, I want you to have peace. Yeah. That's why I'm telling you not to. Not because I want you to be lonely. Not because, I, yeah. I you know, I don't think you should share your life with somebody. But um, in the even in the best circumstance, the best relationship, any kind of relationship – it's not as peaceful as the yeah. optimal because you're dealing with somebody else. So it's super realistic. Yeah. Um, and also, you know, we are always uh, hailing the married people. We're always celebrating the people who found someone to share yeah. you know, their life with or be loved. And so I feel that's why unmarried people may feel more down about themselves. Yeah. And this letter to the Corinthians is telling um, people – that you actually are getting a bonus gift if you're single. And yeah. he's like, oh, well, that's mean to the married people. Well, isn't it mean to the single people when you say it the opposite way? Yeah. So if you're talking to the single people and you say, you're actually getting a bonus gift. Like you now have more time, more energy, more everything to to devote to God than you would if you also had to yeah. work in cooperation with somebody else. The way I see it is, is kind of like this, where it's like, more worries like anyone can get married right yeah physically you can you can get married even in the bible days i'm guessing you didn't even have to worry about dating you, the the husband showed up at the door yeah anyone can get married and so i think it's always hard in the bible is to like not say it's a good thing not say it's a bad thing but it is an additional thing like you're you're oh, you're, you're adding more work you're adding a harder life that if done correctly it can be more rewarding. Yes. If done incorrectly, can take away from your spiritual journey. Right. Right. Like so, it's like it's risky. It's like it's risky. It's it's like with anything. Right. I'm I'm taking more of a workload, or I'm gonna put more time in, in or I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a second business along with my first. Right. And it's like, 
Well, yeah, if if you do it right and you give it your all, and then you can end up way ahead. Right. If you start messing up on the, on the second business, your main business will also fail. Right. And, and so it's saying, don't worry if you have one business. If you feel like you're ready to expand and start another thing through love, right? You already have this love and you want to start that love. Great. You just need to be willing to understand it's going to be a lot more work. Right. It's going to add worry, but it can be more rewarding. Right. That's our time, guys. Um, hope you enjoyed it. If you're married, awesome. You're killing it. Two businesses. That's awesome. If you're not <laughs> married, hey, warrior free life. It's summer. It's hot boy summer. Um, we'll be back tomorrow for Dr. Seuss Friday. Until then, um, peace.